All right, let's build a comb filter in LabVIEW. And this comb filter will be driven by an impulse function. And I will also show you how to set up the audio around that so we can actually listen to the impulse response. The comb filter has two primary parameters called loop time and reverb time. Loop time is typically less than one second and I'll, it, it's just more convenient to specify that in terms of milliseconds. We also need our system sampling frequency and the duration of the waveform to be produced. I'll begin by calculating the total number of samples that need to be generated, by, generated for the waveform. And we get that with the product of sampling frequency and duration. I would like to convert that value to an integer before it gets used by other, other portions of the block diagram. All right, we have loop time specified as milliseconds, but for internal use within the block diagram, we need that loop time to be in seconds. So when I type in a number like 300, I need to divide that by 1,000 in order to get 0.3 seconds. I'll use a math script node to generate the coefficients for the digital filter. The math script node will accept the loop time tau and the reverb time, which we normally see written as t sub 60. Now the length of the delay line is the value n, and that's given by the expression tau times sampling frequency. So that's our loop time times the number of samples per second. And the filter coefficient, g, can be calculated from the reverb time and sampling frequency as essentially 10 to the minus third, or you could also have written that in as 0 0.001. And then we raise that to the loop time divided by the reverb time. Actually sampling frequency does not enter into the filter calculation there. On the outputs of the math, math script node, we need really the, the coefficients uh, a and b ultimately, but it's also nice to generate the calculated values of n, that is our, our delay line length, and the filter coefficient g. So I, I like to have those available in case you wish to see the actual values before they go into the calculation for the filter coefficients. Now the A coefficients, also called the reverse coefficients, look like A1 and then a whole series of zeros and minus one zeros to be specific and then a final coefficient of minus G. The B coefficients, we simply have one of those. Now both A and B are arrays instead of scalars, so we need to remember to change the data type to an array data type. Look under signal processing and then filters and then advanced 
I I R. And we have the coefficients attached like that. And at that point, the filter really is ready to go. We also have an impulse source available. That has a number of input parameters to specify. So I'll specify the total number of samples to generate. The output goes directly to the comb filter structure. And let's take a look at the output that's being generated by the filter. I'm going to do this right away before we start attaching the audio, just, just to make sure things are going okay. So let's get some specific values for our front panel controls here. Hmm. Flat line. That looks kind of troublesome. We're kind of looking for a whole series of impulses starting at one and then decaying in, in a what appears to be an exponential sort of way. Let me do some troubleshooting here. I'll make sure that I'm in fact applying an impulse. That's difficult to see on the plot whether or not there's anything at the at the front. We have some other parameters here to consider. Let's just make sure that the n and the g values are getting calculated properly. Well, that looks pretty good. We have a sampling frequency of 10,000 and a loop time of 0.1. Well, I spent a little time offline looking at this and just having some troubles getting my time axis to display properly on the on the the basic waveform display. You know, I could have done this with the standard waveform display, but I'd be using triple display later on anyhow. What I'm doing now is uh, converting my signal to the waveform data type which embeds the timing information into the data type itself and it's the timing information that was not being displayed uh, the way we needed it to on the graphs. Let's give this a try one more time with the values that we were looking at. Okay, that looks good. And again, I think if you were to take a look at the standard waveform display with the waveform data type, everything would have been fine. Here's a quick way to listen. Now that little click at the end has to do with the the you see each one always has a little tick at the end that has to do with the sound card being reset at the end of end of the signal playing Now for really short loop times, it stops sounding like distinct impulses, but actually starts sounding like a pitch. And this is where the triple display comes in handy because we can quickly look at the spectrum of the signal. Alright, so we're seeing a whole 
series of spikes in the spectrum display. Let's make it even shorter. So our ear hears the impulses so fast that we actually perceive distinct pitches at this point. And when we look at the spectrum plot, we do in fact see what, what we would call distinct spectral components showing up at integer multiples of a fundamental frequency. So they fuse together into a single pitch. Now for long loop times it's an incredibly dense set of spectral components. So all of those, those spectral lines in the frequency domain gives it the name comb filter. Kind of looks like a comb.